Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy. It is the most wonderful time of the year. Time for an updated, all-encompassing, ultimate gaming mouse tier list. There is there's a stupid amount of mice. This is well over 150 mice, which I think is like at least 40 more than the previous tier list. So this is going to be a long one, but... I did introduce the outdated tier, which should just help me like get through a few of the mice from like three or four years ago that are just not being produced anymore. But as always, in honor of the 150 mice, if I could get 150 likes and 150 new subscribers from this video, that would be um, greatly appreciated. But yeah, this should take a while. Starting off, as always, with the Booga mice. And yeah, Booga Mouse 1, this is outdated trash at this point. I, it was never good. But now you can't even buy it. The Booga Mouse 2, on the other hand, that's just, it's going to sit calmly in dog shit tier. Like, there's nothing good comes out of owning a Booga Mouse. It's just low tier, like, literal e-waste. So, unfortunate. But, yeah, now moving on to the Ponage Ultra Custom Symmetrical. I mean, this is a mouse that's kind of getting close to outdated, but I would just put it in D tier. Like, it's nothing I would recommend. But if you can get one for, like, dirt cheap, let's say, like, under $40, you're going to have an all right, like, 2020-esque G pro super light s2 clone type mouse it's nothing great though wireless performance latency isn't going to be up to par um, but yeah the ponage stormbreaker this one i'm it can fall into like a or b tier as far as i know it's still the only like metal ergonomic mouse if you're looking for just a lightweight magnesium ec clone in like a mini shape i guess i mean it's your only option it's not gonna it really be that bad but it's just not gonna blow you away it does have an adjustable sensor position which is a unique feature but yeah it's just a niche product it is pretty expensive like at least 170 dollars so i just don't widely recommend it but yeah i guess a tier um it's where it can sit death adder v3 pro um this is absolutely a based mouse i mean going back to the last tier list this was probably my number one recommendation then i started having some creaking issues fell out of love with it but recently i picked up the smooth touch coating edition um i'm out know razor just keeps finding ways to get me to spend 170 dollars on new death adders and i don't really complain i feel like this is one of the best like ergo shapes for large hands just widely available on the market even me like i was a staunch ergo hater and then i put my hand on this and it just really makes sense so still one of my um top like recommendations for performance but the price it's pretty stupid and yeah i really don't feel like you can go wrong if you want a premium wireless ergo experience but also i'm not saying like this is the end all be all only mouse you can go for um, and yeah, I guess that's really where it sits. I'll get to the wired edition later on in the video. But of course, the Rocket Cone XP, I'm going to go right into dog shit here. When Rocket released this, they like focused on RGB, like macro buttons, the Minecraft audience. It was like Rocket just fell out of favor when it comes to gaming mice and even their latest release the um pure air it's somewhere down here should be called the pure ass because that thing is terrible oh my god after that little joke i gotta i gotta find it where did i fucking put it okay it was hiding from me but i found it and yeah i'm honestly gonna put this in dog shit i don't even know if it was widely released to the western audience i did get it sent out to me from china um but it just had this issue where every time i would click the mouse the entire shell would creak it was just no good it just wasn't up to par so maybe it wasn't like officially released but I would not recommend going out of your way to get that mouse, at least at the current time. Now the Razer Cobra Pro, um, the entire Cobra lineup, I feel like it just goes into B tier. In 2023, Razer really like, I don't know, they just forgot what made them great in like the two years prior. I don't know how they have like short-term memory loss, but the Cobra Pro, it really just wasn't like the answer to the wireless Viper Mini in plastic that people were looking for. Um, it was just like in the 70 gram range. It just felt like the Viper Ultimate release, but a few years later. So yeah, really, it's just not like an esports or like pro play focused mouse so I, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody especially for the price it's arguably c tier but i feel like by the time i'm done with this list it'll be low b tier um and yeah the viper v3 hyperspeed um similar to the cobra pro a 2023 razor release that i just didn't feel like totally hit the mark but there are like pretty confirmed leaks of the viper v3 pro um which is going to be this shape getting released soon there are already pro players using it and i could imagine that will wind up in either a or base tier but yeah um the viper v3 hyperspeed if you are on a budget you can get it for a good price and you're fine using like a mid 70s to 80 gram mouse then i mean you're going to be fine with it presuming you want the larger viper v3 shape and a very high sensor position so it's really just like i don't know it's a mouse that i don't think i touched many times after i finished my review of it some people with large hands i guess swear by it but i'm just going to wait for a new version like that didn't really move me too much the steel series a rocks 5 i mean that's d tier 
close to dog shit. I, I just wouldn't really recommend it to anybody. If I recall correctly, it had a third side button and it was like kind of a sniper button. That was cool. I just didn't like totally hate the mouse, but I mean, I would look like an idiot putting it in any higher of a tier. Um, now we have the Endgame Gear OP1 8K. That is the best thing that has ever happened to Endgame Gear. They are so happy that everybody in the world is shilling this mouse and seemingly forgot about the XM2W. But yeah, the OP1, it is everything you could ask for from a mouse. Truly, the only caveat is that it has a wire. It comes in at 50 grams. Endgame Gear is known for having incredibly solid build quality. The switches are hot swap combined with the fact that they have the like best click latency solution on the market. I don't know. It's just like incredible performance. My only gripe is that the shape is a little bit narrow, which I don't see many other people saying, because I guess everybody else just has like these like feminine baby hands, but I, I don't know. I find the shape to be a bit narrow, but just for a wired mouse, $75, you can't get a better performing mouse. So it's definitely one of my top recommendations. Um, incredible for fingertip for me personally, but like I said, just a little bit thin um, to love for claw grip. Now we have like just tons of fucking pulsar mice. The X X2 Mini and the X2, like the older versions. I don't know where to put these. Okay, I settled on B tier because I feel like outdated is just stupid and not where they belong. So, I mean, I don't know. Compared to the modern version with the X2 V2 Mini, at least I definitely think is a based mouse um, that really lacks the 4K compatibility, doesn't have as good of switches in my opinion, unless you got like the Board Z edition on the previous mice. Um, it's a little bit heavier, just overall not as dialed in. So I would recommend the V2 versions, but if you can get a really good deal on the originals like nothing nothing is inherently bad about them and then the x2h and the midi goes in a tier simply due to the shape differences i just prefer the flatness on the sides of the x2 v2 um especially the mini i think is one of maybe the most underrated shapes on the market um but the x2h i just do find it to be they're like okay you want a fucking hump take a hump now it's better for claw grip it's just not very like um of a passionately designed shape if that makes sense even though i do know a lot of people like bad seed just people with like larger hands are a fan of the um standard x2h but yeah just goes in a tier because i don't recommend it quite as much and yeah, next up is the X2H Esports Edition. I just was not a huge fan of this mouse. It's only available in the medium size. They are doing lots of different colorways now, but it does add around 10 grams of weight to the mouse. You get an OLED screen at the bottom. It is like driverless. It's basically Pulsar's version of a Zowie mouse, but I don't know. I just, I wouldn't recommend it over the standard X2H. It could even be in B tier, but I don't know. It's not like, it's not a bad product. It's just for the $130 price. It's not something I widely recommend. Um, the x Lite V3 ES, I'm a bit more of a fan of, like, I understand that. I understand if you're looking for a bit heavier of an ergo mouse, then this is an option compared to the standard x Lite V3. Um, but again, it is only available in the medium size, and I wouldn't recommend it over a Death Adder V3 Pro. And at least on the first batch copy I tried, I did find the clicks to be a bit heavy and dull, but it still is, without a doubt, a great ergo mouse. It's just not something I'm, like, foaming at the mouth over. Um, Basilisk V3 Pro, I have always hated on on the basilisks like they're not I, I don't know i even prefer the g502 over like it's not a terrible mouse i guess it could go c tier i'm also making an executive decision to put the cobra pro in c tier just to reflect how i really feel about it but yeah the basilisk v3 pro it's not what i'm going to be recommending anybody to buy especially since it is like a pretty significant purchase um but i do know there are like some single player gamers just casual people who want that scroll wheel feature whatever whatever else it has to offer i can't speak this fucking mouse is so bad it takes away my ability to speak um, so yeah, that's really all for the Basilisk. Now the Burst Pro, I'm going to throw this in the outdated tier. It's a rocket mouse from like 2021. Sometimes I see it on Amazon for like $30, which I still feel like is a bit high of an ask, but I don't know. I always just found it to be a very bulky shape with some of the worst clicks ever and unremarkable cable. And yeah, that's really all I have to say. I think there are some other variants in this list, so I'll just throw an outdated whenever I get to them. Now the VGN Dragonfly F1 Pro, not the VXER one, which was my most recent review, a mouse that I just absolutely loved. I'm going to throw this in the A tier. I mean, it's a really good budget buy. It's just a kind of awkward shape. It's not a direct clone of anything. So if you want like a full review, um, I did review this last year. But yeah, it's just like a low 50 gram ambi mouse 3395 4k compatible just one of those super cheap but solid mice out of china not a super cheap but bad mouse which is what most of them are um so the f1 that's definitely one that i can recommend and one thing that you guys might have noticed is that a few mice with the seal of approval are wound up in a tier not based and that is on purpose not everything with the seal of approval 
is going to be at the tippity top of this list. Now, the Extrify MZ1 Wireless, kind of outdated, but I'll still throw it into B tier out of my love for Rocket Jump Ninja. Really, Extrify, they need to do another mouse with him. It's still an incredibly unique shape. I'm not going to lie, I don't use mine much anymore. Um, if it was 3395, 4K compatible, a bit lighter, no RGB, like really Rocket Jump Ninja's vision, then that would be one of the most based mice on the market. But yeah, I'll still throw it into um, B tier, but not really recommending it. If you can get it on a massive sale, God bless. Now the Game Vision's Orbit. This is the definition of a mouse that made the outdated tier necessary. Like Game Vision's, they fucking did one little Kickstarter run. They released this G502 like egg-shaped clone. It was really awful. And then they just never made a mouse again. So God bless Game Vision's, but yeah, not really recommending the Orbit. Now the Glorious Model I, I'm gonna throw this into dog shit, I guess. Um, I don't know if it landed in outdated, it would have been there. Um, but yeah, that's the Wired Model I. I think they have the Model I2, the wireless edition, but I guess I never ordered it because um, I've never made a review of it and I don't have it. So yeah, the Model I, I mean, if you do need three side buttons on a mouse, I guess it can go into D tier. It, it belongs in D tier, but I'm not really like, don't buy it. But yeah, the mouse actually does have four side buttons, just general glorious quality from a few years ago. I would not recommend picking up the OG wired version at any price, but I do need to be a better mouse addict and pick up the Model I too. Um, the Viper V2 Pro, I don't know where this goes, like at the absolute top of A tier or at the absolute bottom of based, I guess based. And yeah, this might be a hot take, but the Viper V2 Pro was a pretty revolutionary mouse because it just changed the game in terms of tech on wireless mice. It was the first mouse to use the um, 3950 sensor. Obviously it became 4K compatible down the line. Um, but yeah, it's just like a good flat shape. It's the Viper Ultimate, but without all of the like stupid shit. Um, and I'm just really happy that Razer released it at a point, but now it's like, it's not heavy, but almost 60 grams for a flat mouse like this when the large ULX exists at 40 grams. So, I mean, is it the end of the world? No, I still made the mouse for some time, but I don't use it as much anymore. If you can get one for like 130 with a dongle, I think that's a good price. But with the Viper V3 Pro coming out soon, maybe it'll actually be on some bigger sales. Um, now the Deluxe M800 Pro, I, it's kind of outdated. I think I have the M800 Ultra on this list, which is the only M800 that belongs anywhere B tier or above. I mean, the older ones, they did they tried their best but i mean they were just kind of like the old generation of chinese mice now the titan ge air wireless another one gonna go into outdated tier this was a cooler master mm720 clone out of um korea i think that's where xenix is based but yeah it was just nothing spectacular in the u.s you can only get those mice for like a hundred dollars plus on ebay and just don't fucking get one at this point unless you need an mm720 clone in which case you probably already have it now the asus tough air i honestly like this little patch of outdated mice just breezing through them um this one i got recommended to review like when the final mouse was the ultralight 2 like the big mouse at the time i don't know it was like a 47 gram mouse from asus it was just really bad though in terms of quality the clicks like i remember it was like wobbly the balancing was fucked up it's crazy that i can recall that i used this mouse for like three days but yeah it was just no good um <laughs> And now the G-Wolves HSK Plus, um, I think they still do sell this one, and this is a better shape than the HSK Pro, but it does have like a 3370, and it's just like, I don't know, it's not a G-Wolves fingertip mouse I would recommend. I, I guess it's not outdated, right, because it's still for sale, and it's not quite dog shit, but I just don't think it really gets anything right enough to be like even above C tier, so yeah, I don't know, it goes into c tier i know there's gonna be one or two people in the comments who are like the hsk plus is the best shape ever and like they're truly gonna believe that and i don't know it's just like sometimes fingertip mice um, can rot your brains. That's another unique feature of them. Now the Keychron M4, I'm actually going to throw this one in A tier. This was like just for a fingertip mouse and for a Keychron mouse. This could not have shocked me anymore. Keychron, like they're a keyboard company. They've gotten mice wrong so many times in the past. I vowed to never review them again, but they actually like the Keychron M4 mini. It's fucking crazy fingertip mouse. I thought it was going to feel like too heavy and dense considering it's 37 grams for like a really tiny mouse. Um, and it does have curved sides as well, but it just worked. And it's a super, it's like piss cheap. I think it's like $70 for a 4k compatible. The 4k is no good, but still just like a solid wireless fingertip mouse. And it's not at the absurd price points of like G Wolf, Zoundkunig, whoever else is making them. I don't think anybody else, but yeah, this is like actually my 
entry level fingertip mouse recommendation. Um, now the Fantech Aria, where does this one go? Is this like super high B tier, low A tier? I think they've like still continually been putting out updates for this mouse. It was always like a really good price. And if you do want something egg shaped, I think it's one of the top options on the market along with the um, Zalkin Z1 Pro. Um, but yeah, it's nothing that really blows me away. And, and yeah, in my opinion, the R is solid, not spectacular. The only reason I consider moving it down to B tier is just for like some population control. Now next up is the Bearded Bob GPX. And I don't know where this one goes. Bearded Bob is still a based guy doing his thing i'm sure if he modded a gpx2 for me it would be at the absolute top of the list but i mean i don't know the gpx1 i personally lost that mouse or i gave it away so i don't know i guess it is technically outdated but shout out to bearded bob one of my favorite blokes from the uk the dornfinger vino s um, this is going to go into the outdated tier i've never even made a review on this mouse i just like had it in my possession a few years ago and now it's still going to be on the tier list forever but yeah this, i don't think dornfinger even makes mice anymore they just focus on mouse pads um the fanatic bolt i was never a big fan of this mouse it was like really hyped and then it releases and it was just like a dud they never made any like significant updates like a v2 version they just kind of took lambsu's mouse and then slapped their own brand on it with the fanatic thorn that's just it's just weird to me um but i don't know the bolt it's unspectacular i guess would be a way to put it um now the gloros wireless mice or is this i don't know the model o2 i don't fucking know just don't get it um especially any glorious mouse that still has like the the bearded man on it that just is a sign that it's outdated the model o2 like v2 whatever it's called maybe that's an all right mouse but the original glorious model o wireless you, like you are chopped liver if that is still what you're using um the vaxi xe i presume this is the wired version i wouldn't really recommend that is it right to put it in the outdated tier i don't know i'm not the judge but i i would put it there um, because the xe wireless 4k compatible it's just going to be so so much better so why would you get the like standard xe now the g wolves hot es wireless yet another outdated mouse there's just the g wolves hot es plus 4k um which is the go-to at this point so what do you guys think about the outdated tier are you a fan my only fear is that it kind of takes away from the dog shit tier but it might not be doing that next up is going to be the ninjutsu sora v2 i'm sorry i don't have the 4k and the v2 separate my creative department is going to hear about that don't you worry um but yeah the sora v2 i'm not gonna lie i haven't reviewed this one yet it's gonna be my first review after the tier list goes live but i'm just not like a massive fan it's still at the top of a tier like it's an incredible mouse but this mouse is being treated like it's god's gift but it is it's 40 grams it's a hundred dollars that is very impressive it feels structurally sound the clicks i do feel are a weak point like they just this isn't even like my personal copy and in the time i've used the mouse like the quality it's like cheap and it's just gotten a bit worse so i don't know if it's just like a overall super premium product but it is a hundred dollars so i guess you're expecting a few shortcomings compared to like a 150 dollars mouse i guess but yeah the clicks along with the coating and just the shape for fingertip i'm not i'm not gonna lie it's just not gonna be like the number one mouse in my rotation but if you do want a smaller shape extremely lightweight for claw grip and you're okay with it not being the most pristine quality all around then it's definitely a buy yeah, stay tuned for my full review, like dropping very soon after this tier list, depending on when you watch it, Um, if you want to see a full review. Um, next up, I don't know, can you guys see my dog sitting on my desk? No, I don't think you can. Um, Next up is going to be the Ninjutsu Katana Superlight, and this one is going to go into the outdated tier. This was a fucking very weird mouse from the old Ninjutsu. A lot of you new gens only know about the Sora, but Ninjutsu started out like cloning like old Microsoft shapes, so... So yeah, the Katana was just one of the most awkward shapes. It like forced you into a palm grip. The button design just felt like ancient. It just felt wrong whenever I used it. And it didn't seem like it was a design that they really stuck to. So um, Ninjutsu kind of just moved on from it. It's an outdated mouse. It is what it is. The Extrify M4, does this belong in the same tier? I think they're like redoing this. Um, now that they've been bought out by Cherry, they're going to come out with a modernized version at some point in 2024. So I guess it belongs in outdated. But honestly, I was never a fan of the shape i would have put it in d tier or dog shit personally what am i doing i'm just like moving these fucking pixels around um cooler master mm 731 uh that's gonna go into d tier it's no good surprisingly um when i was in japan a lot of people were using this mouse so maybe this is like an ergo that just sits really well in the hands of like japanese people um but i don't know when i used it i found it to be awkward it had some massive wireless issues at the time the clicks felt cheap 
Um, but they did fix the wireless issues, and I just never gave the mouse, like, a solid second chance. So, I don't know. It's not outdated, because I don't think Cooler Masters released, like, a newer wireless Ergo, but... It's just no good in my opinion. GameSense MVP wireless, outdated. Uh, GameSense, not too much to say. This was just one of their first mice. What was it, a WMO clone? Next up is going to be the Shrand G303. It's like not outdated, but nobody uses this. It's like B tier, arguably, maybe even high C tier. I don't know, that feels wrong though. But it says a lot that Shroud, who like designed this mouse, there was like a whole fucking cinematic video about the process. Like he doesn't even use it. Like it's just, it's meh at best. Original G303 lovers don't like it because it's not the same identical shape. Some people really love it and all the more power to you. I just don't really recommend it. Maybe if it's like sub $100, go for it, but I doubt it is. Um, the Ponage Ultra Custom Symmetrical 2. This is like either just just a low tier mouse or outdated. It's like a Viper mini clone, um, which at the time was kind of revolutionary because there was nothing like it. But now obviously there's a lot of mice in that genre, including from Deluxe, Razor Directly, I, where I just don't recommend buying this mouse. It was in like the 70 gram range, if I recall correctly. Um, and it's just quite old. So I don't know. I don't really recommend it. But yeah, that is what it is. Um, the Fantech XD5. I just remember this was like the smallest ergo shape. Super fucking awkward. Don't recommend it. Maybe they're still like pushing it, but I actually, you know, this goes in dog shit just because like something has to. I can't just keep putting everything I don't like in outdated. But what I can put in outdated is the original Pulsar X Lite Wireless. What are they on like V8 by now? It's kind of insane. Um, this one has all of the holes on the palm area and the sides. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that like now they just have a full solid shell version that that's lighter than that and a better sensor. So just avoid the original x Lite wireless. And if you have that mouse, you're still using it, probably time to get a new Ergo. Next up, the SteelSeries Arox 3 wireless. Fuck that thing. It is, it's just trash. People always used to be like, get the new version, I swear it's good. This mouse has never been close to good. The only time it should be in a sentence with good is if there is the word not sandwiched between it. Um, I uh, fuck that mouse, just I hate it. Um, so yeah, Steel Series mice trash. Um, Air 58, this is just outdated, even though like there was a point in time where this was going for so much money on like the secondhand market because it was just like, you know, it's the lightest mouse there is, you gotta get it, it's the final mouse. But that was a long time ago. I mean, what was it like in 2018 when they did the pop up event with Ninja? Like, this mouse is fucking six years old there are like probably people watching this video who are younger than the air 58 let me know in the comments if that's you but yeah i mean it was notorious for some scroll wheel issues it was advertised at 58 as that was like the weight of the mouse but it was obviously a few grams heavier um and it's just like it's not anything special in this day and age um but if you do want something similar to that experience just go for like the ulx large what is it called the tiger um there you go and now a few more variants of the burst from rocket which i said i would just put an outdated tier so there that is um the cox cm 600 you might think this goes in outdated but no similar to the um, xd5 some mice are just so trash that they gotta go into dog shit tier this was like a clone of the zowie like Miko, miko whatever you want to call it like the super old mouse like that kind of originated the egg shapes but it's like a different type of egg shape compared to let's say a g305 or like a Fantech Aria. So it was just like a really micro mouse. And yeah, I just remember this mouse was like 40 grams, which was kind of like groundbreaking, but the cable was terrible. The clicks were terrible. I didn't like the shape. The coating was cheap. It was just all bad. Um, so yeah, Coxie M600, there's a little history lesson. It is no good. Um, now the Sprime PM1, I don't know where this one goes. I guess it goes like towards the bottom middle of age here. This is a G703, like kind of mini inspired iteration from Sprime, which is supposedly the same company as Ninjutsu. Um, and this was marketed as like a solution to the fact that there's no wireless G703s, but it is pretty significantly smaller. And there's really, I don't have many issues with the mouse. It is a 45 gram solid shell, well-balanced Ergo. So if you are looking for a lightweight Ergo, like I said, G703 inspired more than anything. I mean, it's a choice, but it is $120 currently limited to 1k polling like the Sora V2 so I'm not saying like 
go get it. It's like the only Ergo mouse worth buying, but it's a unique one. And yeah, there it is. The Dharma Shark N1. Is this even a Dharma Shark mouse? I don't know, but that is like super outdated, super garbage. That Those are all the words I'm going to muster up for it. Now we have the Mchose A5. I believe the um, Mchose A5 Magnesium is somewhere else on this list, but um, neither of the variants are really good, but I would say the plastic one, if you are looking for like a mini GPX type mouse, um, you could go for that. I'd say it belongs at like kind of the bottom of beach here because it is just like one of those random Chinese manufacturers. But if you're looking for just a slightly smaller, significantly cheaper, like GPX mini alternative, um, then I just guess the um, Mchose A5 could be the mouse for you. It is 4K compatible. Um, and yeah, I don't know, not too much to say about it because um, it's not really a unique design. It just is what it is. Now the Felina S450, this is similar in that it is a budget Chinese mouse. But yeah, this one is pretty near identical to the G Wolves Hot S Plus in terms of shape. The weight on it's good. The clicks feel all right. Sensor implementation feels all right. It's just like, it's a solid mouse if you're on an extreme budget and just want something wireless. Um, now the Dharma Shark N3, I don't, I don't know. I just don't even know what to say. Like these Dharma Shark N series mice are genuinely like they were wiped from my mind at some point. All I know is that it's not worth your money and it is currently in the outdated tier. Could just throw it in the dog shit tier though. I don't know if I have the Dharma Shark M3 on this list. Once again, the creative department will hear about that. Don't you worry. Um, the Death Adder V2 Mini, absolute dog shit. I mean, this was one of the original rants I made. Not original, but it was in like my first six months of reviewing mice. I'm like, wow, how is it even possible for a mouse to just be this like flawed overall? And I got a lot of hate for it, but I think I think I've been right over the course of time. Like the Death Adder V2 Mini, it was fucked up. Um, just the general Death Adder V2, I would put it in the outdated tier. Like it's just not worth considering anymore. I'm sure you can buy it for like $20, $30, I don't know. But just anything like Death Adder Elite, Death Adder V2, just get a Death Adder V3 wired at the bare minimum, I would say, if you're looking to get an Ergo from Razer. Um, but yeah, the Mini, wow, just so bad. It was scaled down. The fucking cable was super thick. The side lens didn't make sense. It was just all wrong but they should make the um death adder v3 mini i feel like they could scale that down that shape a little bit better um now the like wired zowie ec the zowie fk i mean i'll just get to the um to the like the actual variants later wait no i think those are the actual variants because they haven't made those and i'm wireless yet so i don't know uh the ec they actually have made in wireless but the zowie fk i just don't recommend it really like i don't know wait for the wireless version the fk to see like why would you get that mouse when you can just get like a viper v2 pro something from final mouse i understand that's not like zowie's target audience but yeah just like a standard fk i wouldn't really recommend it but do i not have any other fks on this list suspicious next up is going to be both the gpx and the gpx2 um obviously super light i've been recommending that mouse for many years now um it's just extremely based but i am going to put the gpx2 and the outdated tier just because some people like skip to the end of the video and it's just going to generate some rage but really i would say it belongs in like the a tier ish i mean if the gpx2 is in base you can find it for like 120 dollars in the us which still isn't like outstandingly cheap so I, I don't know is it significantly worse than the gpx2 no but no, they just launched 4k on the gpx2 you get optical switches some people prefer the og version with lighter clicks just get whatever you feel like they're both outstanding mice um now the logitech g203 this used to be like in the a tier or the base tier because i was like you know this is one of the best budget mice you can get um, but now at this point, it is outdated as much as I hate to say it. Like, I'm really like, damn, am I putting this in the outdated tier? But I guess so. Like, why would anybody buy a wired like G203 light sync at this point with a rubber cable, bad stock skates, just heavyweight, questionable overall quality? I mean, I don't know. It's not something I'd recommend. The G305 is still like a great, like cheap office mouse buy. But and yeah, in my opinion, Logitech really needs to release like a G305 super light, but I just don't see it happening. Like, they just don't touch their old Old lineup it's super fucking weird um the g pro hero though my first ever mouse that one is gonna have to be in based tier i i used that with um a paracord the other day and i'm like yeah this just doesn't feel like quite a modern experience so i don't know i would not recommend these um super old logitech designs at this point g402 um pretty much right there just the same opinion um mongrel is still using it yes that is one thing this mouse has going for it but 
other than that, it's just like a kind of weird version of the G502. And yeah, I always thought the G402 was just like a niche obscure mouse and now it'd just be like super weird if you were still like actively maining it. The G502, this is a mouse where it could go in the outdated tier because there's the G502X lineup. But I'm just gonna put it in D tier because I know there are still a lot of people using like five year old crusty G502s thinking that it's the best mouse on the market. And it's really not, but I would never call, I've never thought the G502 was like true like hot garbage like some people do like unusable like the modern ones the wireless ones those are interesting if you play on a higher sense I don't think they're like the best on the market but yeah I don't think the G502 is like dirt but definitely outdated at this point Zalpin Z1 Pro that goes right wherever the Fantech Aria is actually no I guess this one could go in A tier because it is a little bit cheaper it is the uh, more like Chinese mouse company experience compared to Fantech but you still get a viable product it's 4k compatible but I don't know with what dongle like i've never had 4k with mine um, but it is like just really solid if you want a small lightweight egg-shaped mouse i believe it's bluetooth compatible as well and it won't even cost you like 50 dollars. and for the, that the quality is like pretty good i do hear they've made another shape because that was my only complaint like just make something that is an egg shape so i'll have to check that out um now the g pro wireless this one always goes into either dog shit or outdated. At this point, I really do feel like if you're on a G Pro wireless, like treat yourself, do yourself a favor and get a GPX2 or just a normal GPX if you can find one at a good price. Like the weight, the side buttons on both sides, even though you can like fly them out, I, I still don't fuck with it. The double clicking issues, um, but it's really just the weight for me and the coding. Like, I don't know why you would use a G Pro wireless at this point, but it's not like it's an unusable product if you're still using it, but I mean, I guess, outdated tier makes a bit more sense og hyper x pulse fire haste i mean this one it's just an all right mouse it can either go like c or d tier i think the wireless one would wind up in like b tier so yeah i don't know i don't recommend the wired version anymore however much they're charging for it is probably too much I actually just looked through a list and realized I don't have any updated um, Pulsefire Haste 2, so you can just take what I said about the wired one, like don't really get it, and now in your mind, this is now the HyperX Pulsefire Haste 2 wireless, and that winds up in the B tier. Like, it's just all right if you can catch it on a deal, but it's nothing game-changing. It's just like HyperX makes very, like, standard, run-of-the-mill, mid-tier products, and that's exactly what it is, um, it, but it actually does have a 3395 now, so I don't know, still that top recommendation. G-Wolves Hottie S and the original hottie wired the original g-wolves hottie i used to call it the haiti um was a mouse that definitely got me into mice because it was so lightweight it was just like it was different it was unique at the time now i look back on it i'm like it's pretty cheap like chinese trash um but yeah it was a pretty good mouse at the time and they never really expanded with the um hottie m shape which is kind of like a super light clone so i don't know why that was the case um hello kitty mouse that was featured in a video on my channel in 2020. I never actually found a way to buy this mouse again. I think I got it on like Etsy or something. Super weird, but outdated. Um, same thing goes for the original G-Wolves HSK without side buttons, the wired fingertip mouse. And again, G-Wolves was like pretty revolutionary for their time. They haven't done anything in uh, quite a while though. They just like keep teasing these mice. So yeah, I mean, especially given the quality, I would be shocked if anybody is still legit using those like super old 2020 G-Wolves mice, but all the more power to you now the rocket cane 200 this thing's like a brick just like you could really like damage somebody's skull with this mouse um i think it was a minecraft like jitter clicking mouse but uh, again just like something weird from rocket now the cone pure ultra the kpu a legendary mouse that a few years ago, once again, I probably had in one of the top tiers, but it's a true shame that Rocket really never expanded on this mouse and just made a wireless version with the same exact shape, um, the same incredible coating, which was really one of the first great coatings on a mouse. Another history lesson. But yeah, they just, they abandoned it. If you still have a modern one, like paracorded with some nice replacement skates on it could it be an amazing mouse i'm sure but i don't know i'm not going to recommend anybody to pick one up i don't even know if they're still like actively producing them or if you'd have to get one like used but yeah it's a relic of the past and just an incredible aggressive shape um, that i loved so i still hold out hope that rocket will make a um, modern version but the fucking cone pure ass or whatever that it just ruined my hopes for them as a company now the extrafy m42 once again Extrify just needs to do something. This could wind up, I guess, the C tier for the wireless version, really, or is it D tier? Yeah, it's C tier. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend paying up for it, obviously. It still is a unique shape with the um 
different backs that yeah i don't know if extra five has plans to make a modern version i like everything in their lineup it could be great if they just modernized it took out the holes put in a new sensor um but again i just don't have much hope in them as a company the m4 i think i talked about the m4 wireless earlier yeah that's in d tier so the m4 wired is just super fucking outdated again that's like a 2020 mouse i kind of like the outdated tier because i can be like yes at one point this existed but now you don't really need to buy it um now the matar m this was a super og budget mouse like a 30 dollar amazon mouse it had huano switches i don't know the sensor maybe a 33 60 70 uh but it just broke down on me after a day i don't even know if they produce it but it was like a super popular oem shape i think it was like a clone of an ajaz mouse i don't know not worth your time um now the hk gaming mira m outdated actually no dog shit hk gaming mice fucking sucked are they still doing anything does anybody know is hk gaming like making keyboard stuff um but yeah they had the nouse m as well which was truly the lowest quality mouse i've ever felt it was sold at 70 dollars. they like upcharged it because it was one of the only zowie s2 clones at the time but it was just literally the worst scroll wheel i've ever felt incredibly bad quality bad coding bad cable it was just all bad um so i don't know that mouse still like it shows me it like humbles me whenever i use a mouse that i think is bad nowadays and i'm like man it has nothing on the hk gaming now sam okay next up is the cooler master mm710 this is definitely like either a low tier mouse if not outdated because they have the um mm712 i believe is what it's called the mm711 is the rgb version and this is just a mouse whenever i post on tiktok like this is a mouse that tiktok kids use because it was available on like clearance racks at big box stores for like 15 20 bucks and it was like a solid lightweight mouse but you gotta realize is this released like when it was a competitor to the final mouse ultralight 2 like it's just outdated i remember seeing it for the first time when i was on the bus the new york city bus on the way to high school um, I, I saw this and I'm like, wow, this seems incredible. Then I get it and it's just like, meh. So MM710, I don't know why I went on the long rant, but it was just always like just overproduced, just cheap garbage, but it was all right. And you know, it's a good formula in terms of a small claw grip shape. Um, the MM720, again, this is just, I would say D tier. I mean, it's all right. There are some people who swear by the shape. I swear to God, like they're the weirdest people ever, but they truly are like, this is the only shape that makes sense. It is like going back to this spawn, I think like a 15 plus year old mouse. Um, so I don't know. It's a cool design with the ring finger rest, but the MM720 was just always such low quality. I just didn't feel like it was really good enough to warrant how fucking bizarre it is, but a really modernized, like solid, super light wireless version could be nice, but I just don't see it happening but yeah the mf720 i do respect the people who go crazy about it okay now we just have a ton of glorious mice that are gonna go into the dog shit tier just because like yes i could put them into outdated but that's just a bit less fun to me um all of these just like original glorious mice they're they're not worth buying if you have them they're not worth having either i'm not really even saying that out of just anti-glorious bias anymore it's just like at this point, there's no way that these wired glorious mice are what's best for you. But I also do find it weird that they don't make like the model D minus or the model O minus in um, like pro versions. They've just abandoned the smaller versions of their shapes. Glorious is fundamentally an unserious mouse company, but I don't know. But eventually people realize that. So yeah, now the original NP01, I just checked and this is um, permanently out of stock, I believe. So it is outdated, but at the time... Um, it was Vaxi's first mouse, obviously. I didn't like um, numerous aspects of it, but now they've made the NP01 wireless on um, 4K edition, and I've been loving that, despite the fact that the weight is still in the 70 gram range. Like, I don't know, it's an insane mouse. I'll get to that one later. But yeah, now the Ponage Ultra Custom. Um, this was the um, Ergo version, I guess. I just forgot what it was. I had a dementia moment. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is not something that I would really recommend anymore. It was one of the first like wireless EC mice, but again, it just released in like 2020. I don't know if I would quite say it's dog shit or it's just like, I don't know, more so outdated. And yeah, next up is the Viper 8K Wired. I know like many mice, this has some um, devoted like fanboy shills, whatever you want to call it. And I do respect the performance. It was really the first like traditionally available 8K mouse. Um, but yeah, just, it has like the original Viper, those rubber grips on the side, side mounts on both sides, just not great build quality. The original version of the opticals, if the list goes on and it's just a wired Viper, um, at not an impressively lightweight. So I don't recommend it, but if you can get one for a deal and you want 8k, I, it's like, I guess it's a solid budget buy. Um, unlike the rival 310, which 
deserves no words. It's just like, is anybody using that? Any one person in the comments? Let me know. Um, same thing goes with the Rival 600. Like, I'm going to timestamp these, and, like, the one person in the world who cares is going to be so disappointed. Because I, I can't even muster up words. Like, these mice are, like, just so, so outdated. Like, they just, they should be at the top of the outdated tier. Because Steel Series, it's just unfortunate. Do I even have, like, the Prime Wireless on here? Probably not, but I don't know. It's unremarkable as well. Um, next up is the Pulsar X2 Ambidextrous. And this should be in, like, the unnecessary tier uh, more than anything. I guess dog shit, just to piss the left-handed people off. Um, but, yeah, they do have, like, the side buttons on both sides to accommodate left-handed people. Um, they're, like, removable, similar to how the original G Pro um, Wireless was but yeah really i'm um, nothing to say it is unique in that it's the actually i guess it could be based because it's the only mouse to accommodate left-handed people but unfortunately left-handed people aren't based so i don't know it's just it's wherever if you, most people it's unnecessary completely next up is the razor viper mini which i never thought i would say but it's outdated you just can't find it anymore the original or not the original but the standard razor cobra the wired edition at 40 dollars has just taken its place and it's not like a massive upgrade and the fact it's the same price and the cobra doesn't have any impressive specs is like kind of disappointing I wish they kept the Viper Mini in production. When this was like a $20 mouse, it was one of the best buys. It was the original greatest budget mouse of all time, but now you can't find one, so I don't know where else to put it, but it's tragic putting it all the way down here because, I mean, that mouse is a legend. Um, now the Razer Viper Ultimate, um, this one can go in like D tier. It is very outdated because um, obviously like just get a Viper V2 Pro. The V3 Pro is about to release. Um, but yeah, there are some people who still like it, whether it be due to the charging dock, side buttons on both sides, or just like, I don't know, they got it fucking five years ago and they just can't switch off it for whatever reason. It's still just like an all right mouse. Um, for the time, it was good. I, I hated on it though, pretty hard. But yeah, really whatever price it's at in 2024, I'm not gonna be out there recommending the Viper Ultimate. Zowie U2, on the other hand, this is gonna go in base tier, at least for me personally, I had a very good time um, with this mouse. It was Zowie's really first attempt at a modern lightweight mouse. It comes in at like 60 grams. It is a new shape from them entirely. Um, which gets like very thin at the grip with um, just a unique shape overall. I feel like it kind of got killed by ELO shapes because people are saying, oh, it's just like the S2, but it's really nothing like the S2. Recommend watching my full review. But yeah, Zowie, like I stained the coating and Zowie DM me like do an experiment to see if I permanently stained it. It was kind of insane. I don't know if I even ever did that. But um, yeah, it's definitely like a top tier mouse in my opinion. I just wish Zowie would focus on the tech side. Um, they have this fucking massive dongle, but just make it 4K compatible compatible they're really the only company at this point to not have any type of higher polling rate solution and like some like zowie like fanboys and shills like how do you justify that like it's not performing better because they don't have the best tech i i hate to break it to you um but yeah i'm still obviously i put it in base tier regardless of that yeah, I just wish they would focus on having like the best of the best implementation, especially given the fact that they have a 540 hertz monitor releasing relatively soon. Um, now the Zowie S1 and S2C, I feel like these can go in the C tier. Will that piss some people off? Probably. It's just in a weird point with these, um, like the ZA series, the S2. Um, like when is Zowie going to make them wireless? That's a real question. They've only done it with the EC and then launching a new shape with the U2. So yeah, I mean, I guess they can go in B tier because I don't think that you're going to have a bad time. I just don't think it's really a buy that makes sense. And with the ZA shape, there really has been nothing that's even come close to it. So unless you're just praying that Zowie releases like a wireless modernized version, it's an all right buy. It's just not something I'm recommending for the money um, and performance just in the current market. Like an OP1 8K is $75. The 1K version is $50. And what does the C-Series Zowie mouse cost? Like 70. And if they were to update them, maybe like the D-Series and it's like 8K wired, that would be incredible. But it's like, would anybody bet on Zowie to do that? I personally wouldn't. But yeah, I mean, there's more to come with Zowie this year. Hopefully we will see by the next tier list. Um, but yeah, G-Wolf Skull Mini and the Skull. These are outdated, just completely abandoned by G-Wolves. The Skull Mini was one of the first like sub 50 gram mice, if I remember correctly. An Ergo Mouse, I was like fucking finger tipping it, playing Crunker. It was um really good at the time, but yeah, it's just um I don't know why they abandoned it actually. G Wolves should release a um just Skull Mini, but up to date as it can be, like fucking 30 gram wireless. And the original Skull is just a giant like Zowie EC1-ish type shape, and yeah, it 
did not stand the test of time. I feel like I've said that term a lot this video. Next up is the Ultralight 2 from Final Mouse, and I feel like once again, this is gonna have to fall into the outdated category. At this point, I saw one being tested on an X lat. It's like very high in terms of click latency. It's locked to 500 Hertz, unless you like use that weird software. I still know my Ultralight 2 lore. It was one of the first mice that really got me into mice, but I can't recommend buying one at this point for anything above like $80 if you just wanna try the lightweight final mouse small shape, but you can just get the Cheetah. Obviously the ULX is a lot more expensive, but it's also significantly lighter than the Ultralight 2 was, so I just don't recommend it at this point. Um, same thing goes with the original Endgame Gear XM1, XM1R, whatever this is. Um, I guess this one can go in like B tier because they do have the XM1 8K supposedly coming out soon, which is the same as the OP1 8K, and that could be a top tier mouse, presuming you're looking for an XM1 shape, um, but I would definitely recommend the XM2 Wii over this, which I'll probably put an A tier wherever that is on this list. Okay, yeah, here it is. The XM2 Wii, that just makes a lot more sense. It has the same 3370 sensor. It is only locked to 1K polling, and yeah, it's not going to blow you away like the OP1 8K will in terms of performance. Will most people notice a difference? Honest to God, probably not. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's nothing crazy, but I recommend it probably on the same level as like the Lamzu Atlantis V2. Just comes down to whether you want the lightweight or just the solid like quality that comes with the Endgame Gear experience. Now the Atom Palm Hydrogen, which should deserve its own like disappointment tier because this, if you watch my previous tier list videos when this was in its like three year delay, I was hyping this up. The expectation were so high with this and then it just launched and it was such a such a dud I don't even know what happened to mine they made a v2 version it didn't seem to be any type of massive improvement so I just like I don't know it can the atom palm hydrogen can exist if it has a legion of users that would shock me um, but I'm sure they will be mad about this but I don't know that was it was just such an unimpressive mouse experience it was really just fucking ass um, so unfortunate timing really the m1k from Zhang Koenig, this has to go into the outdated tier, even though, I mean, it was always very limited. It's not like you could just go out and buy one, but yeah, both the M1K and the M2K are no longer being produced. Um, but yeah, they were based mice to begin with in the 20 gram range. I think the M1K belongs in the base tier because it was just the, I mean, it's the craziest fucking mouse ever. Um, carbon fiber, it was like $350. Maybe it was actually a little bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, just a pure fingertip mouse. I never liked it. I'm not saying to go spend a thousand dollars to get an original M1K. Um, but yeah, it definitely belongs in the base tier while the M2K I'll just put that in outdated, but yeah, the M3K, I spent my $400 and ordered one. I don't know when it'll show up, but the M3K will be on the next tier list. But yeah, these are definitely the most based fingertip mice, but does that mean they're the best? Oh, now we have the SteelSeries Prime Wireless. I swear a few minutes ago, I was like, I don't know if this one's on the list. Um, And yeah, it'll honestly go in dog shit. Like it's a SteelSeries awkward, rigid ergo shape. Some people stand by it like they do every shape. Um, but yeah, it has a 3335 sensor. At the time it launched, it was like $130, but SteelSeries has like nuked the prices on some of their mice. I think this along with the mini version are like maybe like 70 bucks now. So is it god awful? No, but it's in the dog shit tier. So do with that info what you will. Um, now the Vaxi NPO1S wired. This will go in the outdated tier. And when I talk about the um, NPO1S wireless, um, which I guess I will do right now, um, it goes into the base tier. But yeah, both the NPO1 and the NPO1S wireless, the now 4K versions are some of my like favorite just solid wireless mice on the market. They are obviously on the um, heavier side, but the NPO1S is such like a unique thin shape. It really doesn't feel like the NPO1 that much. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit like thin for me. The side buttons are small. Even the scroll wheel is just a bit small. So I do actually prefer the NPO1 wireless at this point. Um, and that's a lot more of like a bulky filling mouse that I kind of relax or aggressive claw grip. It's really a mix. But yeah, I do think Vaxi mice are absolutely top tier. They are like 130 with a 4K dongle and it is a higher ask, but you're getting like a truly premium feeling product. It's on the same level as Zowie in terms of price and arguably it's better performance, a larger variety of shapes. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of a Vaxi fan. I don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, now the Rocket Cone Pro Air. This belongs in like D tier. Honestly, it can go in C tier. All of the units I've had, I picked one up when it was on like a massive Black Friday sale and it had like the same scroll wheel issue and just super awful click quality. It's a good shape. 
if you want something like larger for palm grip but i can't really um say the quality is going to be great and it is kind of outdated in terms of wireless experience at this point i think the cone pure air again or the rocket pure air whatever it's called was their solution for this but it's just like i don't know i guess it belongs in outdated even though you can probably pick one up for a pretty cheap price on amazon now the extrify mz1 zeiss rail the original mz1 it kind of has to go into the outdated tier um, because the mz1 wireless that's at least trying to be a bit more modern but the wired version um, with the super bad shell creaking i don't recommend it much at this point but it does have the um, rgb rails like rocket jump ninja intended but yeah really just praying extrify actually releases new mice um, now the Razer Orochi V2. Again, I used to speak pretty highly of this mouse for like a smaller fingertip mouse, um, but now I guess it's like just kind of on the same level as the Logitech G305. I guess I recommend it a bit more, but compared to mice like the Zaopin Z1 Pro, Fantech Ari, I feel like the Orochi just loses out. It is one of the smaller like egg-shaped variants, but the quality of my clicks was always just terrible. They never did anything to really address that in the design, but, but it's just not the like small budget mouse it once was, and it is of course battery powered now the faxi outset ax um i guess this is the wireless version and this goes in the a tier for some people um they're like this is literally my best mouse for aiming i can't aim as well as i can on this mouse like with anything else so uh i guess for some people it does have like that magic factor i was never a fan of like just how high profile and like stubby the shape is along with the very heavy weight um but it's not like an ec it's just like a squished up ec but yeah i don't know for some people who palm grip i would imagine it is like really a god tier shape but for me i just i avoid it but i gotta acknowledge that it's one of the um, top mice on the market it seems like a lot of tack fps players enjoy it now the razor naga um i don't know where this goes probably dog shit i've always hated on this just the entire style of mice they just i don't know i care about mice for like fps and aiming and it does not excel for that i god bless it though and that's all i'm gonna say now the vancer gretza this one has to be outdated this was really like an original final mouse starlight 12 medium clone it was the first one it was the super like underrated chinese mouse for a while but yeah it's just not relevant at this point vancer does have some better mice coming out soon i believe the groove and i can't remember the other one's name um but yeah where are their other mice because those belong in outdated as well the caster and the Pollock. I don't even know if these were ever officially for sale, but I just remember reviewing them and just being so fucking disappointed. So yeah, Vancer so far has not really like blown me away as a mouse company. The Gretza was probably their best offering like when it was relevant at the time, but apparently their new mice are the real deal. So we will have to find out. Okay, next up are the Starlights and these are in a weird spot. Putting them in outdated would be really troll, but given the fact that ULX exists, the WL Mouse Beast X, which is pretty much a uh, medium Starlight clone. I feel like these have to just be like one tier bumped below. Like I think they're A tier if you already have them, but I don't think if like going out and buying a Starlight is an A tier decision. Like I just don't think it really makes much sense. I also don't know why I have like a duplicate of the Starlight with specifically the Tens edition. Uh, but I think Tens is pretty cool. But I feel like if I put this in the base tier, like people are gonna think that version's like actually better. Um, so it can go in the dog shit tier. People are gonna be confused regardless the 10 starlight it's more or less the same the medium version i have of the 10 starlight is like really pristine quality wise though so i can't really complain starlights are solid but just not quite the um ulx which is the next option and again even the ulx i feel like at 190 dollars it is very hard almost impossible to like justify that price given the fact something like the ninjutsu sora exists and that's a hundred dollars a few grams more but it does have a solid shell um but yeah i've just been a final mouse fan forever i love their shape specifically the small and the medium i haven't tried a ulx cheetah yet though and i'm not the biggest fan of the tiger but it seems like other people are but yeah the ulx it's there's a lot of drama but it's still one of my mice that i actually keep in rotation but yeah really i've just always been a fan of whatever final mouse's current offering it is and currently with the ulx in my opinion it's the best it's ever felt it's obviously going to be lighter than the starlights better sensor better clicks it's just all around improved but i do feel like final mouse like over the years at least with this recent drop like the fomo the gap between them and the competition in terms of weight has decreased so yeah i don't feel like there's much like fomo like if you're not shelling out 190 dollars like you're absolutely absolutely missing out but i don't know i've had a good experience with my ulx's monitoring them heavily for like any build and click quality 
deterioration. Um, but yeah, now the WL Mouse B stacks, I guess this is like both the mini and the large size. I'm much more of a fan of the medium size, not the large, my apologies, um, because the medium, it's just like much smaller and thinner, lower than the final mouse small shape, which is already like really pushing it for somebody with normal sized hands. So yeah, B stacks mini, very fucking small, but the B stacks medium, it's really just um, a final mouse ULX medium shape like 98% of the way there. And yeah, originally there were some quality issues that have since been ironed out with the B-Stacks. I would say now the biggest issue is just like the generally weak battery life. Um, but yeah, considering the fact it's a few grams heavier than the ULX, in my opinion, like the slits on the side as opposed to holes, it's a bit just worse of a design. But generally the fact that it's like an in-stock mouse, like around $50 cheaper, for most people it makes more sense rather than waiting on a ULX if that's the experience you want. Um, they did make a boardsy edition if you think I'm like selling out shilling, really not the case whatsoever i mean i get accused of shilling the ulx I, apparently i'm a shill for fucking everybody and yeah next up is going to be the piranha mouse mods um just all of his stuff in general i have not tried an updated piranha mouse mods product in a few years honestly and so i really can't attest to his latest stuff i know some of the mod kits can get pretty cheap though um but yeah i definitely want to try one of his mice that isn't on a g305 pcb because currently i just don't really know but i've always thrown his stuff in around b tier because it's solid but i just never felt like it's best of the best on the market um, but 3d printed wireless mice have always been quite niche now the ninjutsu origin 1x their original mouse and just meh and yeah, this was a 3335 generation wireless mouse. I was never a huge fan of it, but I still remember the shape, the super aggressive curvature, like for your thumb, and it just like interacts with your palm for claw grip in a way that no other shape has. So it could be like revitalized, but in my opinion, like I don't even know if they sell it anymore. You can probably get one for like 30 bucks. And at that point, it might be a half a decent buy, but still not relevant. Now the Quadraclix RBT, this was a mouse that's designed for like arthritis or something. As you can see, like the clicks are on a second layer above the mouse. And I like their owner was freaking out at me via email like this year. And I reviewed the mouse like two years ago um, for like saying that it was bad. So I don't fucking know what the deal is with that thing. So I guess it belongs in dog shit tier. Next up is the bloody A7. This was always like a Minecraft double clicking mouse. That was just god awful in terms of like build quality, weight, sensor, shape, just everything that makes a mouse good. This did not excel at. Um, but I don't know if it's like outdated at this point, if people are still using it, but it's just a terrible mouse, truly. Um, no other words are needed. Um, now the EC2 wireless from Zowie. I feel like this belongs, I don't know, right in front of the Pulsar X Lite V3 Esports Edition, just because like, I don't know, it's the same thing as the Zowie experience, except it isn't from Zowie. So if you do want the true Zowie EC wireless, I believe they have the um, EC1 and the EC3 as well. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they have fledged out the entire lineup in wireless and that just belongs in the A tier. Like it's not based in my opinion, just because I'm not like a super EC2 like shill, but I understand a lot of people are, so it has to be at the tip top. Um, though like the $130 price, no 4K, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, now the Glorious Series 1 Pro, what happened with this? Did they ever make like, no, they definitely never released this shape as its own thing. So it was really just a group buy and then they just gave up on it, even though it was a great shape, um, like kind of similar to the Viper Mini, um, wireless, a little bit bigger. It was lightweight, it was kind of impressive, but they just never threw in good tech. Maybe they will in like two years because that's how fucking Glorious moves, but Unfortunately, I guess that one is gone in the wind, as many mice often are. Now, the Cooler Master MM712, I don't know where this goes. Like, B tier, C tier, I think it has a 3370. I believe I gave this mouse the seal of approval. If I put this in the C tier, that would be the lowest a seal of approval mouse has ever gone. So, I don't know if I can risk that. So, maybe it's, like, at the absolute bottom of B tier. I mean, it really depends on the price. If you can find one for, like under $50 equivalent, then it's like, it's a solid budget buy, not as good as the VXE R1 Pro, which I believe I don't have on this list. And that it genuinely pains me. I'll have to like replace another mouse for it. But yeah, I just don't really recommend the MM712. It is a good shape. And I understand like Cooler Master products are available everywhere. So if you can get one piss cheap, it's decent. But yeah, I don't know. It's either like low B tier, high C tier. It does have a high sensor position, kind of unique. Um, yeah, just generally, it's a Cooler Master mouse. Now we have the G705. I think I might need to, this deserves its own tier. This deserves its own inclusive tier. How do I do this? Add a row above. Okay, now how do I give it a name? Inclusive. And then now we can put the G705 
in the inclusive tier. I mean, you gotta leave a like for inclusivity. Yeah, I really never get political, but I feel like this mouse just perfectly shows like the direction Logitech went. They wanted to pander to marginalized genders with a just awful mouse, like a heavy, small, just shitty mouse. Like I've tried to, I've reviewed it instead of just giving people shapes that they've been begging for for years. So it's really unfortunate, but it is also inclusive. Um, now the Model O Pro, this was similar to the Series 1 Pro where it was just a group buy um, that they did with a lightweight Model O, but they actually did um, update this with the Model O2 and then the O2 Pro. Um, the O2 Pro is actually similar to this in that it's like decent and lightweight. The original O2, I think it's right here, it's honestly dog shit. Damn, it could be a D tier. Um, it could be argued into C tier, but I really hated and it. Yeah, like I said, I'm sure the O2 Pro is better. I still haven't tried it personally. I did buy the D2 Pro, um, but Glorious doesn't send me mice. And I was just thinking like, at best, this is a worse Viper V2 Pro. So it's like, do I really, do I need to try it? Do I need to review it? And I opted not to. Um, So I'm sorry, Glorious fans, if you're somehow still watching. Now we have the Iron Cat um, HPC O2 and the HPC O1M. If you put a gun to my head and asked me the difference between these mice, I would have no idea. I don't even know if I've reviewed both of them or if the editing department somehow included this one, but I know one of them is like a GPX clone or like China GPX imitation shape with hot swap switches, but it was just really overall no good and way too expensive. Or did it have like some other gimmick? I honestly don't know, but I just would not recommend it either version, but I don't think they're dog shit. And what's funny is the company is also called Incot. It's also called Iron Cat. So I feel like Incot is just like how a Chinese person would say Iron Cat. And I've never been proven wrong. So I really need to put these in a tier. I don't know. They seem like C tier to me where it's like, I wouldn't recommend them, but they have a decent gimmick going on. Next up is going to be a Wise Owl OGM Pro. I believe this was their first mouse, and this is another, like, just B-tier, solid Chinese mouse. It actually does have quite good quality, but it's around 70 grams, if I remember, and it's just not really an A-tier mouse, in my opinion, even though I did just accidentally place it there. But yeah, this is something of a morph between, like, a Zowie EC, the Steel Series Prime, and just, like, a kind of flat, rigid rocket shape. Um, it's a very interesting mouse, but it's one, like, that if you missed out on, I don't feel like it was anything massive, and it kind of just set the floor for the Wise Owl Cloud, which is, in my opinion, a very good mouse. Next up is going to be the Viper Mini Signature, and it might seem like with my, like, elitist, lightweight, small mouse preferences, I would be, like, a huge fan of this, but it honestly, like, it missed the mark for me. It's 49 grams, which is by no means heavy, but for a super small shape like the Viper Mini, I just, I don't know, it was not massively impressive for me. It felt too small. Um, when I was playing Fortnite and the side buttons on multiple copies were just horrible. Like they deteriorated a lot of like creaking tons of pre and post travel, like a really awful experience. And I mean, it's $290. It's a $300 mouse. And I mean, people hate on the ULX for the price, which I think is pretty valid, but it's like, where is the value with the Viper Mini Sig? Even compared to the Sora V2, you can pretty much get three of those for the price of a Viper Mini Signature. It's a lighter mouse. Like what, where's the value really at yes it's incredible performance but i don't know it's really not one of my like personal go-to mice i much prefer like flatter sided shapes like the op1 x2 mini final mouse just in general i think it's a lot better now death adder v2 hyperspeed another c tier mouse i feel like almost everything in c tier is just like a mid-level razor mouse that i don't feel too strongly about i do think that this like it had a really good place in the market. I just checked. It's like $50. So if you are that more like casual type, you want the old death adder shape, it's probably the best option for that. But I don't think it really competes with top tier options, but it's widely available. It has good features, even has extra buttons on like the top of mouse one. And I have a pretty fond like memory of it. I believe it uses batteries. I think all the hyperspeed versions do. And now the Death Adder V3 wired, an absolutely based wired mouse, pretty much on the same level as the OP18 8K, where these are my top two wired recommendations. If you want something larger for like claw or palm grip, um, go with the Death Adder V3, obviously, if you want an ergo. But if you want like the smaller, thinner uh, mouse, then go with the OP18 8K. But yeah, the 8K on the Death Adder V3, the better coding a solid build quality and a lighter weight like compared to the wireless version it's kind of an incredible deal if you can stand the um average wire it's not mediocre but it's not the best of the best um speaking of the best of the best the pulsar x2 boardsy edition i mean this i guess it could be considered outdated because it is no more 
But at the same time, this is my video, this is my mouse, so it's obviously going to wind up in base tier. If you purchased a Board ZX2, shout out to you. See, that rhymes. Not many things do. Um, now the G-Wolves Hottie S Plus 4K. Uh, this is another mouse where it's like top of A tier. It's nothing that I ever really consistently used. I mean, maybe I'm just like guilty of some anti G-Wolves bias because I know a lot of people enjoy them, but I, I just don't fucking use G-Wolves mice. And yeah, it's not even like G-Wolves has a really bad reputation for quality like they did in the past. Their wireless is fixed up. Um, I just was not a big fan of the HTX shape, but the Hottie S, yes, I enjoy it for claw. But again, I feel like it's similar to the Sora V2, the Lamzu Mayas, and other mouse where I think they're just good mice, but they're not like the greatest, the best for me personally. But A tier, that's still pretty much like some of the best stuff on the market. Now the G502X, um, a very interesting mouse that I honestly haven't used my personal copy of in a while. It's definitely not going to go into A tier, but I feel like it could go into B tier because it is like it's pristine quality. Yeah, the weight's kind of insane. I feel like the lightest wireless versions around like 88 grams or maybe that's the wired one i don't know if it's still above 100 grams so i remember using it using it with a higher sense and the experience wasn't bad and it's still like i don't know it's a g502 maybe maybe i'm crazy and it belongs in a lower tier but i really don't think so and if you think it's the best mouse on the market please get a grip um now the asus rog harp ace this is a mouse that i don't know kind of it was just obscure it was asus's large like G Pro wireless alternative. Um, it's a larger ambi, but I was not a huge fan of like all of the features. I believe Asus like announced some mice at CES, so similar to a lot of these other companies, um, they might have some stuff coming out soon. I feel like that was just a very broad statement. But yeah, I'm not like a huge fan of the Harp Ace. Um, but some people, I guess you could really argue it into A tier if you have like a large hands. But for me, it was very um, forgettable. Now the HSK Pro. This is a mouse that I am a big hater of. I just hate the shape. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's really a um, shape that makes sense for fingertip, much less with large hands. Um, I feel like if I put in the dog shit tier, I would just lose too many subscribers. So I don't know where it belongs. Um, where did I even put it? Just B tier? Definitely not there. Um, I don't know. Where's the HSK Plus? It can go right next to that. Or I'm just, I'm truly not fans of them. I don't think spending well over $100 for an HSK makes sense in any form. I will say that much. Um, now the Geals HTX. This could go into A tier. Um, similar to the Hottie S Plus. I think I kind of just said. This is a very flat shape. Um, there's not, it just feels too thin and awkward for fingertip with where I grip. But yeah, it is in the low 40 gram range. I do feel like the 4K version is a bit overpriced at like around $170. Like that's kind of fucking ridiculous. Um, and yeah, I was never able to claw grip the shape just not a big fan of it but i know it works for some people but yeah personally it's probably in a lower form of a tier especially because the quality of life was just so bad originally because the dongle and the mouse itself used different cables to charge and it was just like it was stupid as fuck so i don't know i'm not a big fan of the htx but maybe g wolf's new stuff that will blow me away now we have the lamsu atlantis and the atlantis mini um the atlantis i feel like it just belongs in a tier it could be in base tier but i haven't personally used mine that much it's just really the same as the xm1 in terms of shape the xm2 we honestly but the atlantis mini um this is just a smaller version i feel like it's a bit more unique of a mouse and some people with small hands for claw grip seem to swear by the shape the sides are very curved it was just a bit too small for me to keep in my main rotation but it's definitely a viable mouse obviously the new batches are tuned up in terms of quality 4k compatible under a hundred dollars like it's hard for you me to complain about this outside of the shape obviously the weight is good and yeah i would honestly recommend an atlantis mini over an htx um, for most people and the standard atlantis it's really just a toss up whether you want that or the xm2 we but yeah when the atlantis came on the scene it was definitely like really one of the first like chinese mice to hit it big we could say and yeah i think it's solid the extrafy m8 on the other hand this is an unfortunate mouse. I mean, the whole selling point was that it had low button height, but it sacrificed so much to get that, and it still just had a god-awful design. It charged out of the side of the mouse. You gotta realize how insane that is. They literally, today, the day I'm recording this video, they put it on a 50% sale. I guess they realized, like, they were just chopped liver, so they had to had to reevaluate. And yeah, I do think I remember seeing some leaks for a modern version with actual, like, comfort grooves on the clicks. And it, it is tiring being so right all the time about, like, mice, but somebody has to do it. 
And when I said the extra Fi M8 was no good, I, it seemed to prove that way in the long run. But God, I fucking hate that mouse. It was like super small, just awkward in general. Um, but yeah, you can watch the original reviews of it if you want a laugh. Um, now, the XE wireless from Vaxi, similar to the um, Outset AX, I feel like it just belongs right there, where it's like kind of an alternative to the GPX shape. It's just like the GPX shape if it was different. It's just a very safe fucking formula. There's no aggressive back hump. It doesn't force you into any style of grip. I always just found it to be a bit meh and it was always a bit heavier than the super light, but I'm sure if I just like fully committed to it for two weeks, I would like it a lot, but um, yeah, just really just Vaxi's safest ambidextrous design, I would say. Quite possibly their only ambidextrous design. Um, but yeah, now we're gonna move on to the Attack Shark X3. And this is like a piss cheap mouse, like 30 to $40 range. And I was pretty big on it when I originally got it, but I, at some point I got a second copy and the clicks just felt very cheap on both copies. So this is a mouse where it's like, yes, if you have that $30 budget, it's viable if you just like are getting your first PC. A lot of people are on console. I don't know why you would get a mouse at any point on console. But yeah, there you go. Get the Attack Shark X3 if you're on console. It is like a kind of mini GPX-ish style shape if I had to say it. There's a lot of those coming out of um, China. And yeah, there's a version called the Kaisona M600, like different companies, same manufacturer. It's supposedly a little bit better in terms of quality clicks. Um, but yeah, it's just nothing special. It's a solid budget mouse. Now the Lethal Gaming Gear LA1. I feel like this one is very unfortunate because Lethal Gaming Gear had this planned out for a while. And at the time, it was going to be like, if it released on schedule, it would have been one of the top mice. But they got sabotaged by their factory, um, which is like all sorts of drama. That could like literally make its own video. Um, but yeah, now I think they're currently $60 because they had to do a massive sale due to just the side flex issue on... Um, that's present on pretty much every copy. And I think for $60, $33.95, lightweight mouse, very good click quality. Like, it's not bad, but I, it's just not, like, up there with the top mice, in my opinion. I don't use my copy too much. I don't think I've ever made a full review. But if there's enough interest, I might, or I might just wait for a new mouse from Lethal Gaming Gear, where they are hopefully not sabotaged. Um, now, what do we have? The Axie Outset AX. I believe this is the wired one, because, yeah, I already spoke about the wireless. Um, it's just going to go in outdated tier for simplicity i don't know if they're still selling it i honestly doubt it but yeah just get the get the wireless version that would be my recommendation i remember the wired one was quite heavy um and the cable it just wasn't great all around now the dare you a950 pro magnesium the most forgettable magnesium mouse of them all. I mean, where does it belong? B tier? I don't know. And yeah, it's not really shit, but at the same time, it's not worth spending like 120, 150, whatever this mouse costs um, on like just a random Chinese magnesium mouse for the sake of it being magnesium. I know they do have a plastic version. I believe it's literally around the same weight. I've never tried that one, but yeah, that's probably still around B tier, A tier at best. Um, but yeah, I don't really have too much insight into this mouse. I recommend watching my full review if you really care. But like I said, extremely forgettable. Next up is going to be the Deluxe M800 Ultra. There are like a billion versions of this mouse. And it's going to wind up in B tier. I feel like it really missed the mark. Like some of these China mites, like you either have it or you don't. And this one, I just remember like going back to my review, there are a lot of like just minor grievances with it. But I still recommend it over the Cobra Pro considering it's like a third of the price. I don't know if it's like 4K, 8K compatible, but I know it's around 50 grams, numerous shortcomings, but it's still just like all right. But Deluxe has generally lost their luster over the years in my humble opinion. Now the Endgame Gear OP1 Wii, this is the wireless version with some of the heaviest clicks ever. You can swap them out for a slightly less heavy version, but that costs money. It's not a pain in the ass, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't really stand by the OP1 Wii as much. It's around 10 grams heavier than the wired version. I mean, the OP1 8K, that is taking the world by storm where I feel like the OP1 Wii has simmered out. So I don't know, A tier, it could be like B tier because I really just don't recommend going for it, but it's still, it's still quite solid. I don't know, it could wind up back in A tier. Um, flip-flopping, lots of that. Now the Fantech Helios um, 2, whatever this is officially called, this is their S2 clone, the most modified, or the most modern version, a slightly modified version of the shape. And I just don't know where to put this. I really thought it fell short. 
um especially with the coding just the overall like build quality it was being raved by other people and it still is so it's possible my unit was just a dud um but even just for like a more budget like s2 clone type i do think this is like i think 80 dollars with a 4k dongle so it's by no means an egregious price around 55 grams it's just a solid mouse for claw grip but i don't th think it's really excellent really my gut tells me to put it into b tier and you always got to listen to your gut um now the glorious model d2 pro this is once again gonna go into b tier i mean by far the best mass-produced glorious mouse ever i mean they did some of those limited drops that were pretty good but this one they're still selling it i don't think the weight balancing is the best it really just does fall flat compared to like the x v3 in my opinion it's by no means as premium as the death adder v3 pro and it's like 130 dollars yeah you get the 4k dongle but if you're going to spend premium mouse money you should get it from a non-glorious like premium mouse brand in my opinion so it's just not something i rate too highly and just given where the ergo market has gotten it's not it's not my top choice and it's currently only available in one size so doesn't even win out there now the lamzu maya this can settle in the a tier the updated version my original red unit i did have some issues with um coding just creaking budding quality but overall this newer batch copy i got i was able to enjoy the mouse a lot more and it's similar to the um ninjutsu sora v2 um even the sora v1 where these are small mice they're light mice but they're really only designed for like small to medium hands and claw grip so with bigger hands it's just nothing that really works exceptionally well for me and the way the sides curve in it it doesn't make sense for fingertip and i do know the tachi is coming soon from lamzu and that might be a slightly modified version of the maya shape i know it's a little bit bigger but I don't know the Maya it's still a good deal if you want a small mouse 4k compatible lightweight under a hundred dollars but I don't know it's in a pretty contested market there but for some people they seem to love it the Atlantis v2 4k I already spoke about the Atlantis just pretend I had the right picture um no time needs to be spent there and now the Lamsu Thorn I might get called a hater I, I don't know where this goes like B tier or A tier because for me I don't touch this thing at all I think it's just like a weird palm grip shape it forces you into a very specific type of grip whenever i try to claw it like with my thumb at an angle it just it doesn't fit in my hand like other ergos do and yeah my gripe with the thorn is entirely with its shape it is one of the lightest weight ergos um like actually at a decent size and i do think like more or less the quality the implementation weight balancing it's all up to par but it's just not a shape that i'm going to use consistently and yeah they do have the fanatic branded version so i don't know it seems like people are liking it if fucking fanatic's willing to do it then again fanatic did the bolt so i don't really know but yeah it's gonna sit in b tier just because personally it's b tier just kidding i'm actually gonna put it in low a tier along with the fantech helios 2 because i feel like my gripes with those mice are just very personal and that they can still be very good buys for people and i feel like there is a pretty big like distinction between a tier and b tier so i'm just trying to be fair trying to keep everybody on their toes and now the ninjutsu sora like i keep doing this where i fuck up the labels we can pretend this is like the original like 4k version i feel like that's pretty much in b tier it's honestly a shame that they released the 4k version right before doing the v2 which is just so much lighter uh, but it is a different shape i could see how some people if you just want like a somewhat thicker feeling mouse um could prefer the sora v1 but yeah i wasn't too big on it i'm definitely more of a fan of the v2 but still not just really a killer shape for me now we have the optimum tech zero mouse i really don't know where to put this one um i guess it's based because optimum tech is the goat isn't that right everybody um but yeah i was not i was not in love with his mouse but i don't know it's similar to a lot of these mice where i don't think you can really buy it but i'm not going to put it in the outdated tier that would be fucked up now the wise owl cloud this is another mouse it's either going to be at the top of a tier or base tier it is a steel series sensei clone which we have never seen before so it is a large ambi mouse a very rare very scary thing um and it's just executed very well from wise owl in my opinion it's like really good quality sensor implementation click quality just it's overall held up well and i actually still do use it um from time to time if i want just like a bigger longer feeling mouse so yeah i do think the cloud is very underrated um it could honestly go into the base here it is like 120 dollars with the 4k dongle but i don't know if i really if i enjoy it quite that much but yeah it's definitely one of the better large mice on the market um so give it a shot and now the last mouse of the video shocking pulsar x light v3 i feel like this just goes right in a tier like it's one of those 
um like good not great but where it is kind of great it's just not exceptional um when it comes to ergos and they do have all three sizes they have a large which is like ec1-esque it's not an identical shape but it's a similar size and generally a feeling in hand like if you use an ec1 you'll be able to adjust to an x light v3 large and then they also have a mini if you want like a fucking super small like ponage stormbreaker level of size ergo and then just the standard size of course which they also have the um v3 version of and yeah the quality is solid the weight is very low and yeah i personally prefer it over the lambsu thorn for how i grip the mouse uh, but yeah, it's not like there's going to be a big difference. It really just is a toss up. And I feel like A tier is where it belongs with pretty much every other Pulsar product, I believe. And yeah, I guess that's it. I was looking for another mouse. God damn, this is a lot of mice. I'm going to have to make this significantly smaller so you can see everything. Okay, I think that is good. And honestly, let me move a few things around, like get the little meme choices out of the top of the tier. And yeah, I feel like base tier, I want to keep it a bit smaller in terms of like what I truly stand by, I think is the tippity top of the market. And then we have A tier with a ton of options. I mean, because the mouse market is saturated, so it makes sense. And yeah, I don't know if there's anything I need to adjust. Oh yeah, the VGN, I did not talk about the VXE R1. So I mean, that is a mouse that I literally just reviewed, I think like two days before recording this video. And it's pretty much a Pulsar X2 inspired shape. It's literally $37 though. It's like 4K compatible, 50 grams, well built, good switches. Like it's an insane mouse, but I forgot to add it to the list, but it's made by the same manufacturer as the VG and F1. So the VXE R1, just pretend it's there. Um, and yeah, that is the one thing I really missed. But as always, I agree with my opinions. I think that this is, I mean, the greatest mouse tier list ever assembled. Let's be honest here. Let's keep it humble. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what else there is to say. Let me know what you guys thought of the outdated tier. I think it was a, definitely a relief, but I could see why some people would feel would feel cheaped out. Like, hey, some of these mice aren't outdated. I'm one of the eight people in the world who uses a G Pro wireless still. Um, so yeah, let me know. Make sure to, of course, leave a like and subscribe. And if you want any more information on any of these mice, I almost certainly have a review posted. So check that out. Links for everything in the description below. And that's going to be all. 162 mouse tier list. The most, most shocking tier list ever assembled. Peace out.